Good morning, good morning, and welcome to this beautiful Tuesday morning. This is a day that has been set aside for prayer and devotion, so we thank you for joining us this morning for this beautiful day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Our scripture reading for today is coming from 1 Peter 3, verses 8 through 17. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version, 1 Peter 3, verses 8 through 17. And this scripture is fitting for a time such as this. Finally, all of you be like-minded, united in spirit, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, courteous, and compassionate toward each other as members of one household, and humble in spirit, and never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Avoid scolding, berating, and any kind of abuse. But on the contrary, give a blessing. Pray for one another's well-being, contentment, and protection. For you have been called for this very purpose, that you might inherit a blessing from God that brings well-being, happiness, and protection. For the one who wants to enjoy life and see good days, good, whether apparent or not, must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile, treachery, deceit. He must turn away from wickedness and do what is right. He must search for peace with God, with self, with others, and pursue it eagerly, actively, not merely desiring it. For the eyes of the Lord are looking favorably upon the righteous and the upright, and his ears are attentive to their prayer, and he is eager to answer. But the face of the Lord is against those who practice evil. Now, who is there to hurt you if you become enthusiastic for what is good? Let me read that again. Now, who is there to hurt you if you become enthusiastic for what is good? But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, though it is not certain that you will, you are still blessed happy, to be admired, and favored by God. Do not be afraid of their intimidating threats, nor be troubled or disturbed by their opposition. But in your heart, set up Christ apart as holy, acknowledging him, giving him first place in your lives as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope and confident assurance elicited by faith that is within you. Yet, do it with gentleness and respect. And see to it that your conscience is entirely clear, so that every time you are slandered or falsely accused, those who attack or disparage your good behavior in Christ will be shamed by their own, by their own words. For it is better that you suffer unjustly for doing what is right, if that should be God's will, than to suffer justly for doing wrong. Again, I just read from 1 Peter 3, verses 8 through 17, and that was the Amplified Version. Let us go before the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Lord God, we thank you for your word on this morning, Lord God. We thank you for your reminder, Lord God, to keep our tongue from speaking evil and our, keep our tongue from evil and our lips from speaking guile. Lord God, that means to, for us to, to direct to go out and speak positivity, Lord God, to speak life into the atmosphere, Lord God, to speak life into our home, into our children, into our marriages, Lord God. And for that, we say thank you. Lord God, we come together this day, Lord God, thanking you and praising you for joining us together 
for a time such as this. Lord God, we thank you for a day set aside to do devotions and prayer, Lord God. So, Lord God, we pray for each and every person who is dialed into this prayer warrior call. We thank you for each and every person that is represented, Lord God. We thank you for the children that are represented, the spouses, Lord God, for the friends and family members, Lord God. And, Lord God, we ask that you would meet the need, whatever it is right now, in each individual home. But we thank you for the opportunity to come to you collectively, Lord God, because just as you promised in your word, where there are two or three gathered in the midst, there in the place that there you are in the midst. So we thank you, Lord God, first of all, for being in the midst. So, Lord God, we ask that you come against any and every distraction that will keep this prayer and devotion from going forth, Lord God. Lord God, we pray that you would give us an ear to hear. Give us a mind to understand. Give us a heart to believe and a desire to do just what you have said, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you that you are the author of our lives, Lord God. We thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Lord God. We thank you that you are Jehovah Roha, our healer on this day, Lord God. And we thank you that you are Jehovah Shalom, our peace. So, Lord God, whatever the need is, Lord God, whatever we are seeking on this day, Lord God, if it is a healing, Lord God, heal our bodies from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, just as we are promised in your word. Lord God, if it is just a desire to do more, Lord God, give us that more, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. If it is a desire to have more courage, Lord God, to have more love to present, Lord God, we're asking for that on this day in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Lord God, we pray that as we listen to this devotion, Lord God, that you will allow us to listen intensively, Lord God, and be ready to go forth, Lord God. Give us a spirit of discernment, Lord God, before we even hear, Lord God, and who we need to share this word with. We thank you. We praise you for this day, Lord God. Satan, we cast out. You have no power or control over anything we say, do, or think. We call all your plans void. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The devotion for today is titled, Win the Friendship, Not the Argument. Win the Friendship, Not the Argument. A life on mission means being real and asking yourself questions about how you communicate, both with your words and your body language. Have you ever had a time when you've been talking about God or on your faith journey and ended up in a debate that went nowhere? Maybe you presented all the right arguments or shared a personal testimony, but the person still refused to consider an alternate point of view. Perhaps it's made you feel like you want to give up on them. Have you considered that there is something more important at stake? For every argument you win, it doesn't mean you won the person. Now we'll read that again. For every argument you win, it doesn't mean you won the person. In fact, quite the opposite is often true. A debated or strained conversation can end up causing a barrier or distance, distance with the person and stop further discussion about God and faith. 1 Peter 3.15 tells us to give a reason why we believe, but to do that with gentleness and respect. When the conversation turns into a debate, it sets up a them and us pretense and puts people on the defensive. From that point on, everything you say requires a rebuttal. In a debate, most people prefer to be seen as right rather than actually be right. This makes it hard for anything you say to cut through their defensiveness. So change tactics and avoid the debate. A nicer way to engage is to share experiences with each other. That means listening to each other's stories. You can talk about situations where God has helped you and the changes that have happened in your life since knowing him. Tell them of something that has happened to you and then ask if you would like to 
if, you, if they would like to experience the same. You could even offer to pray for them. Even if they say no, you can leave the conversation having won the friendship rather than the argument. Winning in an argument can create tension in the friendship and can close the door to future opportunities to share in a more positive way. When you win the person, you will have many opportunities to disciple them as you continue to share your life with them. Perhaps you're reminded of a time when an opportunity with someone didn't go so well. Today might be that day where you could talk to God about that. Could you go back to the person to see if you can restore the relationship and reconnect again? Again, win the friendship, not the argument. Dear Lord, we thank you again for this word, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for this word, which was right and fitting for even today, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for the devotion time, Lord God. We thank you for bringing this forth to my attention, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you that even on today, Lord God, when so many are having arguments, Lord God, so many are having debates, Lord God, whether it's about you, Lord God, whether it's about social justice, Lord God, whether it's about racism, Lord God, Lord God, we thank you that we can apply your word to every area of our life. So, Lord God, even as I've read the, de- the devotion, Lord God, we thank you for the minds that were clear, Lord God. We thank you for the situations that you brought forth, Lord God. We thank you for even now the situations that you're bringing forth to our remembrance, Lord God. Do we need to go back to somebody, Lord God? Do we need to prepare a conversation to be had, Lord God? Lord God, we ask that you lead, guide, and direct us, Lord God, as we go forth, Lord God. As we go forth in this cool world, Lord God, where people were already on the defensive, Lord God. So you have told us, Lord God, you have given us a direction on this day, Lord God, and how to have those conversations, Lord God how to go forth, Lord God, and walk away and not destroy the friendship, Lord God. And even if there's no relationship, Lord God, you already instructed us, Lord God, how to go forth and and even have a friend at the end, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, even on this day, Lord God, in those intense moments, Lord God, in those intense conversations, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you that we will leave with love, Lord God. We will leave with a word from you, Lord God. We pray and thank you, Lord God, that we will leave with an intent to pray for that person, Lord God, no matter the outcome, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, no matter if they want to or not, Lord God, no matter if we feel like they want us to pray for them or not, Lord God, we thank you that we will leave that conversation, Lord God, praying for one another, Lord God, just as we have been called to do. And, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, that in, within this devotion, Lord God, you have called us to be disciples, Lord God. You have called us to be more like you, Lord God, and for that, we say thank you. So as we go about this day, Lord God, we ask that you lead, guide, and protect us, Lord God. Protect us in the highways and byways, Lord God. Protect us in our homes, Lord God. Protect us as we walk and do exercise, Lord God. Protect us on whatever we duties we have to do on this day, Lord God. Protect us even if we have to get on, on the computer and have a meeting, Lord God. Protect us in those meetings, Lord God. Protect us over the phone and the airways, Lord God. Whatever we have to do that you have already planned out for this day, Lord God, allow us to lead with love, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for all that you have done in our lives, Lord God. We thank you for what you are about to do even on this day, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. And, Lord God, we decree and declare on this day we will walk in authority, Lord God. We declare, decree and declare that we will walk with purpose, Lord God, because we know who we are and we know who we belong to. We will keep our tongue from speaking evil, uh, from evil, Lord God, and our lips from speaking guile. Lord God, we pray that as we go forth this day, we will think life. We will be life and we will speak life in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Have a blessed and wonderful day, everyone.